Hi, today we are going to talk about what can be done with a support account of our PBX. This video consists of four parts: SSH into PBX, Linux command, our service command, and custom configuration. With that said, let's go to the first part. So, in order to SSH into your PBX, go to Settings, find Security, choose Security Settings, click Console, and you will see SSH access here. By default, the PBX uses port 8022. By the way, the port number can be changed according to personal preference. For example, if port 8022 is blocked on your network, you can use any number bigger than 9000 to replace it. Click on Enable SSH Access and click the password I besides your password. Copy this password and click Save. Once done, open X Shell. Put in your PBX IP. Change your part number and click OK. Then we connect to your PBX. We always log in as a support, and then type in the password. And we have now successfully SSH into the PBX. In this part, we will introduce what a support account can do. Now we are at the Linux command line interface. If you want to figure out the version information of your PBX, you can enter YS Tour to query the hardware information of your device. If you want to check network mod and speed, enter ETH Tour with a certain network interface to see some details. If you need to query the network information of your PBX, use IF Config to get IP information. And if you have a need to add the firewall settings, use IP Table NL to check the firewall. Those circles with red boxes are chain names. This command helps us check the hardware boot lock. You can report this lock to us when you have a hardware related issue. So far, we have introduced some common network commands. From here, we will move on to discuss how to get help on the Asterisk CLI, how to check Asterisk statues using the command line, and some other useful commands. You can think of the Asterisk CLI as an interactive control console. It lets you view information related to Asterisk statues, such as how many calls are active, which SIP phones are registered. It also lets you control Asterisk behavior. You can hand up an active call, update configuration settings, or stop Asterisk. So how do you get to the Asterisk CLI? You can only connect to the CLI if Asterisk is running. If you haven't yet start asterisk, you can run asterisk dash lowercase c as in console. This will start the asterisk program and put you on the asterisk CLI. The other way to assess the asterisk CLI is to connect to an already running asterisk instance. This is done by running asterisk dash r, but this won't display all of the startup messages. Asterisk is capable of printing all kinds of informational status message on the console. Sometimes these messages are important to understand how Asterisk is behaving. Other times, especially on a busy system, they are more of a nuisance. It's not unusual for an active system to display dozens of lines of console output each second. In order to control what output gets printed to the screen, there are two console commands you should know. Core set verbose lets you set the level of verbosity Asterisk used to decide what to print to the CLI. Call set verbose 0 turns verbosity off and almost nothing will get printed to the screen. Call set verbose 1 prints only the most important information. Verbose 2 prints somewhat mod. Verbose 3 prints even more and so forth. Each status message available with an asterisk has a predefined verbosity level and will only be printed to the console. Aside from verbose messages, there are also debug messages that can be displayed. Verbose messages generally related to the administrating of asterisk, while debug messages are more directed towards troubleshooting internal errors and problems. Call set debug 0 turns off the printing of debug messages. Call set debug 1 prints only the most important messages, and so on.
Call Show application lists all of the applications which are currently available. Call Show Channels outputs a list of current active channels, as well as a tally of how many calls have been processed since Asterisk was last restarted. Call Show version displays which Asterisk release you are running. This is especially helpful if you maintain more than one Asterisk server. It can be difficult to remember which system you are logging into, and checking the version may help you. PJ Ship Show Endpoints help us check all the endpoints in a global view. The Asterisk CLI has dozens of commands, and we won't go through all of them in this video. So it's important for you to know how to learn more about what you can do on the command line. The Asterisk CLI has a built-in help command that you should try out. You can just type help and get an alphabetical list of all the commands. You can run help followed by a command name. It will give you the help test and syntax guide for that specific command. A support account can also modify some of the custom files. For details on which file can be modified, see the GN custom file in the custom CFG directory. Now we enter etc asterisk vim extensions.conf. Find the context we want to modify. Copy this part. And then we change directory to custom CFG, create a new extension custom file. Paste it, and here we want to add a new line. After that, we will add some custom dial plan. And I have prepared the custom dial plan here. Choose them all and paste it. Then change any configurations on the web interface. Save and reply it. That's the whole process of customizing. Alright guys, this is what we have in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Get more detail about troubleshooting. Check out our knowledge base. Get more information about system configuration. Please visit our document center. I'll see you guys in the next one.